Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to create a basic counter app using 3D assets in Vision OS and Swift. Let me just show you what I want this app to do. Just like any counter app, you're going to click on something and the numbers will count up. And I've got this 3D asset. The only thing different is that I want to count by clicking on a 3D asset. So when I click on this zero, I want the zero asset to disappear and the number one to appear and so on and so on. The first thing you're going to want to do is create a new project. So let's do that here. I'm going to make an immersive environment app and let's call it counter. Okay. So we have our interesting that it came with an AV player. I'm going to delete these. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to get assets. And to get USDZ assets, you can just get them online. I have these assets from cgtrader.com and I looked up numbers because we're going to be making a counter but we're going to be using 3D assets to show the numbers that we're counting up. Let's look at free and we have these these numbers here one two three you know i'm going to download these and then notice that they are in fbx format so after that we need it in usdz format so you can google fbx to usdz and i have this website here i just click the first link and you can upload your fbx files here and then convert them to usdz here i did that with all nine numbers once you have your assets i have named them zero one two three four five six seven eight nine dot usdz and then i'm going to drag them into my reality kit content assets finish here so here we have our assets zero one two three four five six seven eight nine We've got our assets here and let's begin writing our app Gave me some boilerplate template here. I'm gonna delete all this. I want only an immersive space. I don't need the window group. Don't need any of this. I'm gonna call the ID just immersive space. Delete this. I'm gonna load in the immersive view. Delete this. We don't need a mod right now, but it's always a good practice to keep all your data in the model. For this app, we only have one variable we're keeping track of, which is the counter number. So I don't need this model necessarily. I could put my counter number here. So just keep that in mind. And then let's go to our immersive view. I'm gonna delete all this. Don't need this. Oh, so this is where you would load your app model data in here. I'm gonna delete that for now because I only have one variable that I'm worried about. And that variable will be, I will define here at state var count int equals zero right outside the body and then in the body I'm going to create a reality view so the first thing I'm gonna to want to do is to create a floor and the floor is going to create physics so that three asset numbers do not fall through the floor so let floor equals model entity mesh generate plane and 50 depth of 50 and materials is an occlusion material which basically just means a material that is invisible it will occlude all materials behind it so it'll actually make any materials behind it invisible too floor.generate collision shapes recursive false and floor.components physics body component itself equals dot init mass properties dot default and mode dot static so we have our floor and then we're going to do content dot add well let's do floor dot position dot y equals zero to make sure it's at ground level now let's load our numbers i do if let zero model equals try wait entity zero so we're looking for the zero.usdz file in 
reality get the content bundle. And then comma let zero equals zero model dot find entity named G zero. I went over this briefly in the last video, but let me just show you why I do find entity named G zero. If you print out the zero model, and as you can see, when I look down the tree of my zero model, I'm looking for the item that it has the model component because this is the only part of the entity where you can use drag gestures on it. So when you look at this, it says G0. So you might want to print whatever asset you have, go down the tree, find the name of the asset that owns the model component, and then you put find entity named that name and then you can manipulate the asset. The zero model is not able to be manipulated because it does not have a model component and you need the model component to be able to manipulate it. This is an async function and we're gonna be loading our asset inside this async function. So that means if we find the zero model, then we asynchronously load it into our immersive view. So I'm gonna set all the entities properties. Zero.scale equals one zero point one zero point one zero dot position dot y zero dot position dot z equals negative one. And the reason I do negative one is because it basically just pushes uh, the object a little back away from the viewer. And then we'll generate the physics for this zero. So zero dot components dot generate collision shapes. Zero dot components dot set input target component. This allows the inputs to work on the zero. Zero dot components dot physics body dot self equals dot init and then a material and we're going to be loading it in dynamic mode and finally content dot add zero so that's how we're going to load our zero number into our immersive view. Okay, I forgot to, that I was in window application session role, so you gotta go to your info page and go to your application scene manifest and make sure to set your window application session role to immersive space application session role. Okay, so let's try it out. Okay, there it is, our zero model, but I haven't put drag gestures on it, so let's uh, events and gestures to this. So add an update here and then I'm going to add a gesture. So I added an on tap gesture here. Pass an account of one, that means how many times do you click on the object for an action to happen. And that increments my count variable plus equal one and let's print our count variable to see if it works okay so you can see that when i click on the zero my count is incrementing cool so what we want to do is on the update we want to delete the zero asset and replace it with the next asset so number one so let's say let old number equals content dot entities dot first so that'll get the first entity in the scene and let's make sure that the entity's name is g0 so then we have a condition here. If we found the old number and the count is greater than zero, then we're going to delete this asset by using remove from parent. Okay, test that out. Okay, cool. We deleted the zero. Now let's add the next number. So this is tricky because you can't do async in an update, but you can do a method called entity.load. So I can't use the try await, but I can use entity.load. So I'm going to do that here. 
and I'm gonna look for the USDZ file named one in reality kit content bundle. And then we're gonna do basically copy this and I'm gonna name it one, go through and name all these one. When I look in my tree for my one asset, the entity's model component model entity is still named G0, so it's not named G1, but if you're using different assets, maybe you'll want to look at your tree to find the model entity that has the model component. And it's still named G0 here, so I use G0. And look, it works. My zero turns into a one. Now all we need to do is add all the other numbers. And that is simple enough because we know that all the other numbers are just the same integer as the count. So can we use an escape character and just load in the count? And the answer is yes, we can. So let's just escape out of this with the backslash. And then we put in the variable count and in theory, all our numbers should just load automatically all the way up until nine. Uh, since the variable is not no longer one, I'm gonna rename it to number. Rename all these to number. And let's see if it works. Okay, let me click on it. Oh, so there you have it. It's counting and my assets are being loaded up. There's some physics issues here, but it works. That's all you need to do. We have a counter app now. This introduces some basic concepts of interactivity and using data and using update and interacting with 3D assets. That covers a lot. You can use these basic concepts to create your own app, and it's exciting to see what you can do with Vision OS and immersive spaces and uh, come up with some app ideas and see what you can make. It's a whole new world and there's a lot of opportunity right now. I remember the first iPhone apps, uh, there was a really simple app that someone made called the Beer app and that made a lot of money because it's a brand new platform and there's a lot of potential out there for an app to get really popular. And that's why there's a lot of opportunity out there right now. So hopefully you learned something from this and uh, like and subscribe to my channel. Check out my Vision OS videos and I've also got art and music how-to videos and thanks for watching.